So welcome everyone to Group 35's vision for a dream green urban city. We have named our city Srishti. Srishti is a Sanskrit word which means the universe. So we have named our city the universe because we want our city to be as pure yet as intricate as the universe is. In our city, development goes hand in hand with nature. We do not want to create anything artificial which harms the concept of sustainable development. So in the Grun project, we were told to identify certain criteria on what is wrong with existing cities. So this is the criteria which we identified and we have improved our city on the basis of this criteria. So this is energy production, convenient transportation, green spaces, waste management, urban agriculture, integrated city plan, education, healthcare, water management. So now coming to the basics of the city. To design the basics, we saw the Economist Intelligence Unit's yearly reports on sustainable development where they rank the most sustainable cities in the world. From there, we took the model of Vienna, which has been consistently ranked the most sustainable city to get our total area of 500 kilometers square and decide our total population, which makes our city a metropolis. The most important thing here on this slide is that our total green area percentage is much higher than any other city in existence at 64%. I'll now tell you how. So this is the city layout and this is meticulously designed because each block gives you a data of five square kilometers. So this is also very sustainable in the sense that the biosphere reserve is towards one corner of the city and the sectors which might harm the citizens living inside are also located towards the outskirts of the city, such as the energy sector, the agricultural sector or the waste management sector. We, our city, like you saw in the previous map, is divided into 100 dis districts for ease of governance. And each district has nine, the districts are divided into nine types, which I'll take you through. Each district is very sustainable and has a central park in the middle of it. So the central park is in the middle of it. We have stadiums and the housing is encompassing a park here. The university is encompassing a park to promote green learning. Here we have research labs to promote learning and development of new technologies. Here the research labs are near the waste management areas to, to, so to promote better waste management science. Here we also have a statue of sustainability which can remind our citizens that sustainability is the concept of our city. So this is the housing area division and we have six types of housing because we want to accommodate all types of lifestyles. And we have divided these housings into municipalities, which basically promote local governance and a sense of community. So this is the area allocation for the residential units. And this, this, all of this area was done on floor planner to make our houses very, very attractive and comfortable for our citizens. We will also use passive solar energy in our houses, which will accommodate 15% of the energy. This is something which the other groups didn't do, and they rather used active energy. We will also use light fidelity in, instead of wireless fidelity, which will also save energy and be a lot, lot faster. This basically works like Morse code of LED lights blinking. The green spaces area division, the major factor of our green space of 64% is the biosphere reserves. And also we have central parks, we have district parks, and we have municipality parks. The par In addition to these parks, the buildings surrounding the central park will also be cut out into terraces. And this will also increase the green area percentage and create an aesthetic look of technology and nature going together. The central park will also be a cultural hub for the entire city, taking inspiration from New York City's model. The permeable payments will be used to solve a major problem that we see right now in our city of Delhi, that is water logging and sewage coming on top of the streets, which causes a major problem. So we'll solve that by using permeable payments, which allows for water to percolate down and recharge the groundwater table. The recreational area division is given here. We have all sorts of recreational facilities as well. The uh, stream will flow through the city and bisect the city, taking inspiration from Vienna. This will have two linear spaces for walking sideways and also linear parks. This will help promote local shopping by allowing flea markets. And again, taking inspiration from the world's most sustainable city. The essential services area division is given here and we took out this area and the remarks you see there from again, taking inspiration from the world's best police stations and the best hospitals, uh, giving exactly the amount of resources they need to operate efficiently. The business center of the city will be in a small radius. We decided to do this to uh, avoid much, much walking for the business people. This will be done by using usage of skyscrapers to allow more area. And 
in current skyscrapers there's this effect known as the downdraft effect which basically means that wind hits the skyscrapers and it goes down to create extreme wind speeds at the street level which causes the toppling of cars in certain instances so instead of making a, the wind our enemy we are harnessing wind to create energy to create essentially we are creating energy for the skyscrapers themselves on top of the street we'll use smart street lights which will use solar panels and also an automatic light intensifying system to save energy these will have five applications to society namely safety science cost energy and labor labor in the sense of using usage of such of internet of things to alert the authorities when the street light stops working for we will also promote usage of electric cars and this will be done by three major policies the major problem with electric cars right now is that citizens choose petrol cars as their first car this is because electric cars are much more expensive so a government aid government financial aid will be very necessary in this we, in uh, despite of this we'll still use buses which will use ai and lidar technologies to come up with better and more efficient routes we'll ha also have a policy for school and university students if they live outside a certain radius we will give them free bus rides also we'll have a bicycle track taking inspiration from japan many cities in japan and we'll also have a very smart feature of having a laser light which allows for drivers to see when the bicycle bicycle people are uh, cycling there apart from this we also have a smart bicycle system integrated into the bicycling system this has smart lockers where the bicycles can be charged and the bicycles can be rented by using the city's official app we also have hyperloops but instead of having the hyperloop run within the city which can be very dangerous since the maglev trains and hyperloops run at a very high speed we use them to connect distant cities to ours so that people from distant cities can come do business in our city apart from this we also have this amazing idea by elon musk of underground tunnels which reduces the traffic overhead which basically allows for cars to run at a very high speed this can be booked using the city's app as well talking about the city app now the i'll discuss the previous features already you can pay and monitor all your home bills as well and you can also find a parking space a concept which is currently done in san francisco using sensors on streets for safety regulations on streets we have all these four features for fire safety mechanisms we have the we have the system of drones which reduces the human risk to life increases the longevity of the system and also provides more options for extinguishers to use and also would be more efficient and faster to respond for healthcare we have these four major and unique policies which other groups hadn't thought of we thought drone delivery of medical supplies is very important in the current age due to the pandemic as well and will give a special health card to people according to their economic status and the number of dependents they have so that everyone can afford healthcare for education we'll follow an approach which is also followed in the grown project of a flipped classroom approach rather than a very bookish approach for green policies we identify these three very special green policies the bicycle discount policy in shops the commercialization of solar panels in houses that you can sell the excess solar energy you produce and all businesses will be made to enter an agreement with green banks to promote green laws the essential services in the city outskirts were placed strategically energy agriculture uh, waste management and the factory so that they don't harm the citizens living inside the city in any way the giga factories are basically large factories these will be run by the state but the area can be leased by the businesses so that the state can earn money and these have solar panels on top of them so basically you can imagine a factory which is creating energy for itself so that it doesn't create any carbon footprint a smart dustbin network will also be used underground the city which will use pneumatic suction tubes to basically carry the waste and avoid foul odor three different networks for recyclable non recyclable and hazardous waste the organic waste will be handled by anaerobic digesting a very simple process which creates biogas in the end inorganic waste will be handled in three ways recyclable waste will be recycled inorganic waste will be subjected to the sabatia process which uses hydrogen to create methane which can be used as fuel and for non renewable waste we will extract the metals out of those waste and try to reuse them again so creating an effective circular economy system for recycling power plants we identify these five guidelines which all recycling power plants will have to follow this also answers the question about the ash utilization the previous group post that we will ask all recycling power plants to maximize their ash utilization for water management we identified this shape for the water storage towers currently used in a home city of delhi these have these three following benefits and this creates a whole gist of our water management system above permeable pavements 
biodiverse green roofs and everything. The wastewater management for the non-industrial wastewater will be done in these three steps. This, this is a basic collection of biochemical processes which leaves the water very, very clean. We will also use an idea initially suggested by Bill Gates. He called it poop water. By using microbial fuel cells of certain bacteria, we will purify the water that is contaminated by human feces to turn it into drinking water and also create energy in the process. This is an image of the water treatment plant. And all of this will be done underground. This is a process which is currently followed by China. And it's really, really smart because it's reducing the land occupancy above, allowing you to use land for more purposes and also reducing the foul odor there. And since the sewage pipes are all underground, it reduces the need to bring them up. The energy will be used uh, is going to be solar energy. Solar roofs will be made mandatory for new houses. This is extremely important to promote green energy. We will provide these at low cost due to subsidies, of course. Solar paint is also a very new material, which we see very high prospects for in our city. It uses nanoscale semiconductors and can be used on small appliances. Solar windows will be used in all government offices. They have an efficiency of around 20% so they can run the govern government buildings themselves. Wind farms will be used to create an alternate source of energy. These will be used as backup if something happens to the main smart grid, which works on Internet of Things. Biogas will, of course, be used to treat the waste. We, for agriculture, we identified hydroponics as a very good solution because this reduces wastewater and also reduces agricultural runoff, which is a major problem in our home city as well. This gives the plant the water and the amount of nutrients it exactly needs. We can also provide fisheries underneath the water management system, and this will allow us to raise schools of fish for eating and commercial purposes. This is a whole chart which explains the water circulation system of hydroponics. We will also use vertical farms since humans are developing faster and faster. The area available for farming is also reducing, so we need to urbanize agriculture and uh, convert agriculture from a primary sector activity to a more advanced activity. So this will help in that. We will also use quantum computing in agriculture. This will allow us to identify weeds, for example, and then create effective solutions for removal of those weeds, which will be targeted specifically at those weeds. Thank you everyone for listening to us. And I would like to end by saying a very famous quote that we have not inherited our earth from our ancestors, but we have borrowed it from our future generations. Thank you, everyone. I would like to thank the entire Groon team for helping us and my team as well, without whom this won't have been possible.